Hello! What an exciting day this is. My name is Sam from Core Electronics and today I'm really, really excited to take a first look at the new Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3. It's been rumoured for a while but we've finally got our hands on one and we're going to take a look at uh, the good and the bad. Take a look at whether uh, it's going to be right for your project and what we think of it. So I've got the, uh, the Compute Module 3 development kit here. Now, the Raspberry Pi Foundation have released three different products as part of this, uh, this new Compute Module 3. But before we go too much into that, what exactly is the Compute Module? I'm sure everyone knows the Raspberry Pi 3. It's fantastic, probably the world's most popular microcomputing platform, and it's awesome. But what about its lesser known brother, the Compute Module? Well, the Compute Module, the first one was released in 2014, and it was designed to introduce Raspberry Pi, the microcomputing uh, platform uh, based on Linux, to industrial and commercial users and applications. So for those kinds of designers, they don't need all of the physical USB ports and HDMI ports. They'd rather just have access to the BCM2837, uh, the Broadcom system on chip that has the CPU and GPU um, and all the rest in there, uh, the supporting circuitry and be able to access all the hardware peripherals uh, themselves and control what they want to use uh, in a much smaller form factor, and that's exactly what Raspberry Pi gave. It's awesome. In the form of a SoDim uh, card, which you might know, might be familiar for you if you've used computer RAM before, it's the same, uh, same form factor. Uh, it's fantastic, but it was languishing a little bit. Released in 2014, it had the same specs as the older Raspberry Pi boards back then. Uh, 512 megs of RAM, uh, I think 10 times less processing power on average than the current Raspberry Pi 3. So, They've upgraded it and we now have the Compute Module 3, which is fantastic. So a few things about this, we've got the Compute Module 3, which uh, brings the same BCM2837 system on chip with 1.2 gigahertz processor, one gigabyte of RAM, all the same tech specs that you're familiar with with the Raspberry Pi 3. But we've also, uh, so we've got two modules here. We've got that main module. Now we've got a second module called the Compute Module 3 Lite. Now the difference here is, is that the main module has four gigabytes of eMMC flash storage on board and it ships as blank. You actually have to install the operating system on that flash star. The easiest way is from another Raspberry Pi, but we'll get to that in another tutorial. Uh, but this light offers another alternative to people where the bus that is used for either SD or eMMC storage is broken out onto the edge connector of the sodium package and it allows you to use a storage external to the board or an SD card and you can actually use the same old SD card as you'd use in your regular Raspberry Pi which is pretty cool, very very cool. So I've got here today the development kit because the module is all well and good but it's just a module, there's no USB uh, physical USB ports or HDMI ports or power ports, that's all on individual pins. Uh, so the development kit comes with the Raspberry Pi uh, Compute Module 3 I.O. board and that allows you to, it comes with the DDR2 sodium socket where you can insert the module and it breaks out the USB connection, the HDMI, uh, CSI, DSI connectors really, really well. So I've got that here. Now let's take a look. Let's open it up and uh, find out what's in the box. So let's uh, open this guy up. I've got the safety guard and quick start guide. We'll set those aside for now. Uh, it comes with a power supply, an official Raspberry Pi power supply with international adapters, which is pretty nifty. Same power supply you're used to, nothing, nothing different in there. Very cool. Now we have the I.O. board. Important, important stuff. Some more foam. Uh, micro USB cable. Now we've got here the CSI uh, and DSI connector adapter modules. And we've got the Compute Module 3 Lite there and four jumper cables. How nice. So that's what's in the box. Now let's take a look. First up, let's have a look at the I.O. board. Now, note, you want to handle this carefully, as uh, like other Raspberry Pi products, it can be particularly sensitive to static damage, so make sure you're not handling the circuit board um, too heavily. So it's already got the Compute Module 3 inserted onto here, so the development kit comes with both the, uh, where is it? Both the uh, Compute Module 3 and the Compute Module 3 Lite, so it really is a great development kit um, covering all options, and I know this because, this guy out here, it has, take a look at that circuit board there, 
you can see, uh, let me get a, get a pen here, you can see that there's a section there where you've got a uh, chip and then there's a missing chip there which is normally where that EMMC flash goes. Whereas on the other side of this module, uh, there will be the EMMC flash chip on there. So that's how you can tell the difference. Um, so this is the this is the I.O. board. So let's take a look. We've got uh, a micro SD port, HDMI, then it looks like we've got two two display connectors here, so you can use these uh, DSI connectors to connect up to um, liquid crystal displays, the same way you would the official Raspberry Pi uh, touch display. And they've included a nice little breakout board here. What have we got? So we've got camera, one for the camera and one for the display. Now, there's a little V groove, you probably can't see it on that top down camera, but there's a V groove running there from production. Now, the idea is that you break those boards apart. There's no copper that you're gonna damage, they're designed to be snapped apart uh, because they're not actually gonna fit there. So one of those is for the camera and the other is for the display. There, you can't interchange them, very important. So to set that aside, we've got uh, two camera and two display port uh, sockets there because the hardware peripherals for the BCM2837 actually include support for both. So we'll go down to where the, uh, the peripherals are. Yes, yeah, so you can see there's a four lane CSI camera uh, interface, a two lane CSI camera interface, and then four and two lane DSI display interfaces. Very, very cool. Camera serial interface and display serial interface in case you are, in case you're wondering. Uh, so that we've got SD card, um, CSI, DSI connectors. Now we've got USB slave here. So this port, I believe, will allow you to uh, flush the onboard eMMC storage on the Compute 3, or uh, Compute Module 3, I should say. Uh, so you wanna wanna do that with an external Raspberry Pi, and there's a process for that. Uh, as I said, that's a conversation for another day. This is just an unboxing and a review. Uh, now we've got a USB port, so that's the slave USB. Now we have a host USB port, so this is uh, connected straight up to the USB bus. Now, an important note here is the uh, compute modules don't include Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or Bluetooth. This is because Wi-Fi and Ethernet, uh, and, well, and Bluetooth, they all came off uh, different add-on peripherals. So for example, with the Ethernet and the four USB ports, they were chained onto the, it's got one USB 2 bus. Now off a single bus, you can have multiple, uh, multiple physical hardware ports, but uh, on this, they've only expanded it to a single one. You can add more if you like, but you're gonna need a powered USB hub in order to use multiple USB devices. So no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, and no Ethernet. Of course, as a hardware designer, you could take uh, the hardware peripherals there, the USB bus, and add those on in your in your physical product, but that's up to you. Uh, so we've got the USB port there. Now we've got the power in, taking the familiar micro USB uh, USB power adapter, and then we have header breakouts. So this DDR2 sodium module is actually a 200 pin package. 200 pins, the size of that. This has approximately a third of the uh, the physical real estate that a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B does. You could lay two of those plus an extra one, and it's less than four millimeters thick, which is so cool. So cool. So why would you use a compute module? That's a bit about the board and the development kit and how you can use it. Well, it's designed towards industrial and commercial applications, primarily. It's designed for people who don't want that physical bulky factor and want to be able to sleekly integrate it into their products and have access to all the peripherals and all the power of the BCM2837 board, but to be able to you know, harness that versatility and flexibility of all those ports and just pick and choose what they want, which is really cool. So it's not really designed for the, uh, you know, the average DIY maker to pick one of these up and use it as per they would a traditional Raspberry Pi 3 board. It's actually a different, uh, different product aimed at a different market. So with that in mind, bear, bear in mind the different market. Let's take a look at the good and the bad of this board because it's very, very cool. So the first point is that it's a very stable platform. The best thing about the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3 platform is that it's made by Raspberry Pi. And that means it's got a well-developed operating system. It's got a huge online community. Um, millions of people around the world are using it and it's a tested and proven recipe. It's the same chip as on the Raspberry Pi 3, so there's fantastic software support out there. You're not being thrown in the deep end. You're already in that life cycle, which is very cool. Uh, we mentioned before the micro form factor, super, super small, can fit anywhere. Really good for integrating into uh, products with a constrained size. Um, now, the supporting circuitry and peripherals 
peripherals. Uh, we mentioned a bit about that, but the cool thing about the compute module, I've said that about three times now, the cool things. There's so many cool things, but Another cool thing about the compute module is it has all that supporting circuitry uh, on there. You uh, once you know you're inserting into the correct adapter and power is applied to the correct pins and so on and so forth. Uh, it has everything on there that you need in order for the chip to work correctly. This I/O board is just expanding all those pins into a usable way, uh, which is really cool. You can see a bit more about the uh, the pins there. 48 GPIO pins, so more than is on a standard Pi board due to size restrictions. HDMI. Uh, SD, UART, etc, etc. Very cool. Now we've covered off on the difference between the CM3 and the CM3L. Now one's not necessarily better than the other, they have exactly the same specs, it just depends on how you want to use those storage. Bear in mind that uh, when they announced the prices, the CM3L uh, debuted slightly cheaper than the CM3, which is pretty cool. The CM3 can be picked up for 55 Australian dollars, uh, and the CM3L can be picked up for 46 Australian dollars. So a bit of a price saving there, but it doesn't indicate the ones are lesser board, they're just there for different applications. Um, the Compute Module I.O. board, of course, is a big pro. It's a fantastically designed board, really solid, really robust. And the last thing is the price. The price for the, uh, the Compute Module 3 environment is fantastic. As I said, the prices of those modules, they're really, really cheap. So if you're looking to embed those, or even just get started as a one-off, it's all there. Now, the bad. There isn't really a huge amount I can say that's bad about this platform. It's fantastic. There's not a lot of criticism that can be had against the Raspberry Pi platform, uh, especially for what it is. One thing though is the price of the uh, IO board and uh, the development kit as a whole, I should say. It sets you back a little bit. Um, but the cool thing to bear in mind is that it has, again, another cool thing. Uh, it has the IO board. It comes with uh, the CM3 and the CM3L, both uh, modules for for prototyping, there's a lot of engineering inside this. You get the CSI and DSI uh, adapters, some jump wires, micro USB cable, the power supply. It's all bundled up there as the perfect development getting started kit, which is really cool. And the last thing I guess is the complexity of using this versus the traditional Raspberry Pi. For example, simply to get up and running with the CM3 module, you have to insert it into your IO board. It's useless without the IO board for development. You can't just plug it in and stick it in the RAM slot of your computer, you will guarantee, I guarantee you'll break it. Um, you need that I.O. board to get started unless you already have the hardware implementation for it. Uh, note that they are not backwards compatible with the old compute modules. Um, they share the same sort of form factor. Uh, the CM3 and CM3L are compatible, but they are not electrically pin mapped uh, the same. So you can't, can't interchange there. Um, but with that complexity, if you, as I said, if you want to set up the CM3 module, then uh, first of all, it's, it's, it's blank. There's nothing on that EMMC storage. The Raspberry Pi can't boot anything. So you have to go through and flash that using another Raspberry Pi. That's where that slave USB port comes in handy. So there's a bit to that, more on that in other tutorials. But that's really the only two weak points I can consider is that extra complexity, which if you're an industrial designer, it's more of a pro, if anything, because it has that versatility and flexibility that you're after. Um, and that is, that's a quick overview of the Raspberry Pi Compute 3 module. Fantastic bit of gear. I really like it. I'm excited to try out a couple of projects, uh, you know, where that might be a, a much better application rather than a whole uh, big traditional Raspberry Pi 3 board. Same power, um, more hardware peripherals because you get raw access to the BCM uh, 2837, but a bit more care to be taken with the design. Uh, so that's, that's a bit about that. My verdict, our verdict, it's awesome. If this is what you are after, um, this kind of development environment uh, platform, then it's perfect. Grab yourselves one of these today and start making. If you're after any more tutorials uh, information, check out our tutorials module, uh, and we'll have more things up and going there as we continue to dive in with this board and uh, find out more about uh, some of the cool features there. And then check out the projects module. Hopefully we'll have some projects up to inspire you know, your next big uh, project, product, application, whatever it is. I'm Sam from Core Electronics. Happy making, guys.